In this video, we are going to complete our study of the connectives by learning about implications, including the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of the implication. And implications are just if-then statements. And biconditionals, which are if and only if statements. So again, in our last video, we were introduced to what is a proposition and talked about the first of the connectives, which is the negation not P, the conjunction, P and Q, or the disjunction, P or Q. That was all covered in video one. So here in video two, we will be talking about the implication, the if-then statements, and along with implication, there's a converse, inverse, and contrapositive, and the biconditional, which is the if and only if statement. And if you're a math nerd, if and only if you're a math nerd, you will write if and only if as IFF. Let's look at our first connective of this video, which is the implication. The implication is sometimes called a conditional statement because we are saying that something is true based on the condition that something else is true. So an implication of propositions P and Q is denoted P and a one directional arrow Q. And it's read either if P then Q or P implies Q, which of course both of those mean the same thing. Now the truth values on this one can get a little bit tricky, so I'm going to go through the truth table with you. Remember on the left side we're just going to do our normal P's and Q's. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. So on the left side of my truth table, that's where I just give all of the different combinations. And again, if you are one of my students, this is the way I would like you to write that because it just makes it a lot easier for me to grade the right side of your work. Um, so this is where it can get a little bit tricky because now I'm trying to find the truth table for the implication P implies Q or if P then Q. Now part of this is very easy. We're saying that if P is true, then we would expect Q to also be true. And if that's the case, then my truth statement is true. So here on my first row, P is true and Q is true. That is what I expect. So that's true. So looking at it in terms of say a scenario, if P denotes that it's a holiday and Q denotes the store is closed, and I would expect that if it is a holiday, then the store is closed, and both of those things are true, it's a holiday and the store is closed, that is what I expect, it is true. For my second line, if it is a holiday, true, and the store is not closed, then that's not what I expect to have happen, that is false. So again, what I'm looking for here is if P is true, then Q must also be true in order for my implication to be true. Now, I'm gonna skip over that third one for just a second and go to the fourth one. If P is false, and we're saying P denotes it's a holiday, so I'm saying it is a holiday and Q is false, where Q says the store is closed. So I'm saying if it is not a holiday, the store is not closed, that is what I would expect. That is true. The issue comes from this line right here. This truth value is actually true. And that one's a hard one to get your mind around. So this one's saying it is not a holiday and yet the store is closed. Now keep in mind that this is a one directional implication. It doesn't say anything about whether or not P is true based on Q. And so if we find that P is in fact false, then basically what we're saying is our implication isn't valid. Our implication doesn't say anything about Q. So if the hypothesis P of our implication is false, then it doesn't tell us anything at all about the conclusion Q. So essentially, if 
your hypothesis is false, as it is in my bottom two, then the truth value of an implication, no matter what Q is, is going to be true. Let's talk now about the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. These are just three more conditional statements, so they're still implications, that we can construct using our original implication, if P then Q. And essentially what we're going to do is we're either going to negate your propositions or switch the order or possibly both. So let's take a look. The converse of if P then Q is if Q then P. So the converse is just that we're going to switch the order. The inverse is going to be the exact statement that I had, but I'm going to negate both. So if not P, then not Q. And the contrapositive is going to be switch and negate. So the whole ball of wax, switch and negate. So let's take a look at an example because this is the type of question that you will get. And I threw in a little extra kick here. And the extra kick is notice I've given you a statement that is not written in if then form. And so it's much easy, much easier for us, and I suggest that you do this, is to write the statement in if then form first so that it makes sense. And then from there, it's very easy to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So let's get started. If it is, or it is raining is a sufficient condition for me not going to town. So that's kind of a wonky way to say, if it is raining, then I won't go to town. Now, why did I do that? Because I have my if and I have my then. And then this is a proposition. It is a statement that is either true or false. It is raining. And I won't go to town, also a proposition that is either true or false. So I'm going to call this P and I'm going to call this Q. If P, then Q. P implies Q. That is my original statement. So I haven't done any work yet. I've just gotten ready to do my work. So now let's talk about the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. The converse says if Q then P. So I'm going to say if I won't go to town or if I don't go to town, then it is raining. So all I did was switch the order. I didn't change any of the positives or negatives. So notice this is a won't go to town, so it's already sort of negative. I didn't switch that here. All I did was switch the order. So if I don't go to town, then it is not raining. The inverse means I'm keeping this exactly the same order, if P then Q, but I'm just negating each statement or each proposition. So if it is not raining, because I'm doing not P, if it is not raining, then I will go to town because I'm negating a negative, so that makes it positive. So if it is not raining, then I will go to town. And then the contrapositive, contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. So if I go to town, so I'm negating not going to town, if I go to town, then it is not raining. Now, one thing I want to point out, and the reason I put this star right here next to contrapositive, is the contrapositive will always have the same truth value, oops, value as if P then Q. It's the only one that for sure will have the same truth values as if P then Q. Here's a question for us to try together. And Again, I chose this one specifically because I have not given you the implication written in if-then form. 
So the implication I've given you is Professor B, that's me, Professor B is happy when you complete your homework. So a lot of students make the mistake of trying to write the converse, inverse, and contrapositive without first writing it in if-then form. And I would encourage you to not do it that way. Please write it in if-then form first so that it is very clear. Um, otherwise, it can get a little bit tricky with the language. So reading the sentence, it says, Professor B is happy when you complete your homework. That means Professor B is happy only when your homework is completed, right? So if your homework is completed, if your homework is completed, then Professor B is happy. Not only then, but that's what the implication says, is if you complete your homework, then Professor B is happy. So that is my correct implication. If P, then Q. If you complete your homework, then Professor B is happy. Now, once you do that, then it makes it pretty easy for us to go ahead and find the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. So the converse, if Q, then P. If Professor B is happy, then you completed your homework. The inverse. If not P, then not Q. If you did not complete your homework, then Professor B is not happy. So the original statement just negated. Contrapositive is switching the order and negating. Professor B is not happy. If Professor B is not happy, then you did not complete your homework. So hopefully you did well on that. Again, it all stems from being able to write your initial implication in the proper form. That brings us to the biconditional. And a biconditional is also a conditional statement like an implication, but by, of course, implies to. So this is actually just a two directional implication. And it is denoted with the double sided arrow and read P if and only if Q. And what that tells us is that for the biconditional to be true, both propositions must share the same truth value. So we're going to create a truth value or truth table just as we have in the same way that we have before. So we have P and Q. And again, the left side is just going to be all of the different possibilities. So that's true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. On the right side is where we're going to do whatever our conditional or connective statement is. And in this case, that's just going to be P if and only if Q. Now, the only way for P if and only if Q to be true is if they share the same truth value. So we can see here we have true, true. So my biconditional is true. And here we have false, false, which means my biconditional is true. Both of those instances, the truth values for P and Q are the same. If you'll notice the other two, true, false, those are not the same, so my biconditional is false, and false, true, so my biconditional is false. So we just talked about a biconditional and I want to give you a little preview into our next video and what we're going to be doing. Our biconditional P if and only if Q can also be written as a compound proposition. And that's what we're going to be working on next is being able to make a truth table for compound propositions. So we're going to talk about basically how to construct this. But for now, I've already sort of put it together and I want to talk about um, basically how to fill it out, right? So we already know this part of it the part on the left. That's pretty easy to us at this point. We're writing all of the different combinations of truth values that could happen. And we only have two propositions, so we only need two to the second um, rows. And that, of course, is four. So we have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Sometimes I can't talk and write at the same time. 
Now, to this point, we've really just kind of had two parts to our truth table, the left-hand side, which is all of the different combinations, and then the right-hand side, which was everything else. And these are gonna to start to get a little bit more complicated. And so now I kind of have three parts. So I lied to you before when I said there were two parts. The middle part is going to be to find all of the parts that make up the compound propositions. And then the very last part, especially when we're looking for equivalencies, and that's what this is saying, is that P if and only if Q is equivalent to the, and again, we're looking at the and, we're looking at if P then Q and if Q then P. So we're saying that those two things are equivalent. And so that's what's going to happen now is we're actually going to have three sections to our truth table. So in the middle, I'm looking at the parts that make up if P then Q and if Q then P. So if P then Q is, if P is true, then Q must be true. So that's a true. And then of course this one would be false because P is true, therefore we would expect Q to be true and it's not. And remember, this is that tricky one. When P is false, then the implication sort of goes out the window and our results are true and true. And we're, then we're going to do the same thing, if Q then P. So if Q then P, that's going to be true. Q is false. And if Q is false, then our implication is true. This one is true to false. So if Q is true and then P is false, that's going to be our false one. And then false, false would be true because again, if the hypothesis is true, then the implication is true. So that's just parts that are going to help us determine these two columns. And what I'm trying to do in these two columns is to show that the truth values are exactly the same. So let's take a look. We have, we'll start here. We'll do this one in green. So we have if P then Q and if Q then P. So what does that tell me? That tells me I have to have um, both of those things to be true. So that's true here because I have true, true. Here I have false, true, so that's false because I need both trues. I have true, false, so that's false. And then I have true, true, so that's true. So I need them both to be true in order for that to be true. We just did the if P then Q. And again, for that one, we need both P and Q. And I'm gonna get rid of these. We need P and Q, oh, I messed that up, didn't I? True, true, um, true, false, true, false. We need P and Q to have the same truth value. So that's here and that is here. We'll do this one in blue. So that means true goes here and true goes here. And these don't have the same truth value. So as we can see, these two columns have the same truth values. So we have shown, and again, that's not a proof, it's not a mathematical proof, but it's a way to show that two um, truth compound propositions are in fact um, equivalent to one another. Now that we've covered all of the basics, we've covered propositions and connectives and compound um, propositions, now we're going to look at constructing a truth table. So being able to come up with the table like what I showed you in the last example.